Hi, I'm Steven Johnson. This is my electric car that my friend Ron Easley and I converted in college. And we built this electric car to show that electric cars don't have to be weak and slow. I really wanted to prove to people that, you know, exploit the immediate torque capabilities of electric cars and make something that would really wow people. So I started with a Pontiac Fiero. It's a 1988 formula model, which has the best suspension of the Fieros. And um, I got a black one that looks pretty cool. I bought the car as a running gas car for $500 and then I sold the V6 for $250. So the donor vehicle cost was really low, but then I, in my quest to make it extremely powerful, I wound up spending a lot on all the components. So it's running a 2000 amp Zilla controller. It's the extra high voltage model. So it has a peak power capability of 640,000 watts which if you compare that to a Tesla Roadster, which is about 185,000 watts, uh, you can see it's, it's a lot more powerful than that. And indeed, I've drag raced it. <clears throat> I'm uh, involved with the electric, the National Electric Drag Racing Association, NIDRA. And, uh, you know, I really got excited about electric cars seeing John Whalen's White Zombie Dotson and uh, Roderick Wilde, who's another Washington resident with his 79 Mazda, the Maniac Mazda that could beat Dodge Vipers in the quarter mile. So I, I said I want to do a similar thing and made this Fiero. Uh, I'll show you in the back. It has dual motors. They're warp eight motors. So they're eight inch diameter and you can see the, the lower one and the upper one, and we designed and <clears throat> built uh, and machined. One of my friends from college was working at a machine shop at the time, so we were able to do all the machining ourselves. And um, from this side, you can see our adapter plate design houses uh, the pulley and belt system. And we machined the pulleys out of 7075 aluminum, so they're really lightweight but strong. And then the teeth for the pulley, we bought a steel pulley and then machined out the inside of it and just press fit and fastened the teeth to, the, to our aluminum one to save weight, but uh, have the actual surface where the belt mates to uh, be steel instead of aluminum. And then I have it set up here um, with sort of a caveman disconnect <laughs> system uh, and it's plugged into the charging circuit right now, but I can plug it into the run circuit when I'm ready to drive. That also makes it a little drive-away protection there <laughs> while you're charging. Yeah, and uh, then the other cool thing is I could connect my battery pack um, to something else, like an inverter or something, to power the house, or you know, I've used it for other things sometimes, so um, that was one reason I did it that way. And I'm looking forward to upgrading to lithium batteries, so I'm hoping to use some of the lithium polymer pouch cells. And is that a A123? Yeah, this is an A123 20 amp hour cell. Okay. And um, currently I've been using the lead acid batteries since converting the car in 2005. And um, this is the second set of lead acid batteries I use them, and they're AGMs, uh, because they can put out a lot of power, a lot of cold cranking amps, which with a 2000 amp controller, I need all the power I could get. So I could have gotten better range or some of the Thundersky type affordable lithium batteries would give me a lot greater range, but not the power that I need. So I'm excited to maybe be able to get some of the A123 batteries now uh, at an affordable price and get my trunk space back and everything. But like I said, the, the point of this car was to show off how fast electric vehicles can be, and it really is. Now, how, how are you charging up right now? Oh, I'm charging with a Manzanita Micro PFC 30. So it's a 7.2 kilowatt charger. Um, it's about the same amount of power as a dryer, so I can plug in. I have a whole bunch of different adapters 
to plug in at my friend's dryer or an oven plug or an RV park. And then I've made a J1772 adapter. So I use a 50 amp uh, inlet where the gas cap used to be. And then I made this little adapter to 1772. And actually my company HPEV, I sell the little adapters. But uh, HPEV.com, high performance electric vehicles. So um, then I can use all the public charging stations that we have here in Washington with the J1772 port. And this one was an early prototype. And so normally you don't plug it in upside down, but it's gangsta style. So uh, anyway, it's pretty cool. We got that running off of a 240 volt feed here and I charged it up in under two hours because I mean the lead pack is pretty small, but it gives me 30 mile or so range. I drove from about 30 miles away and uh, charged up quickly. Um, there's a lot of other cool cars here today I'm sure you'll be seeing. And if you want to see inside, um, my friend and I put in a flux capacitor. Oh, and then I put a seven inch color touch screen there. And back under the dash, I have a small car computer running Windows. So I have my own little stereo and I can look at in the future, when I get the lithium BMS in there, I'll be able to watch all the cells and everything to get good battery information.